Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is good that we are here together. A special welcome. I do know there are some of the McPherson clan that were uh, having a great time yesterday, last night uh, at Creef Hills and have joined us this morning and that's wonderful. It's a good way for us to begin by sharing the peace of Christ. We've talked about a number of ways to share that peace. We have practiced flinging the peace. We have tried fist bumping the peace. This morning I thought we would be very reserved Presbyterians and perhaps we could share with one another simply a sign of God's peace. Let us say good morning and God's peace to one another. Now if you will turn with me to the call to worship, let us begin together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Let us worship God together. Our first hymn is 814, Morning Has Broken. Let us bring to God our prayers of confession and our prayers of adoration. Let us pray. Loving God, this morning offers us a fresh new day full of new possibilities. You greet us with love. You invite us into a life rich with meaning. As our day begins, we remember again how faithful you are and what a beautiful world you made for us to enjoy. As the community gathers, we celebrate that you meet us here in a spirit of love. You remind us that we are deeply loved and deeply valued. You knit us together in relationships where joy and sorrow can be shared. You call us into community You teach us to be good neighbors. Open our hearts this morning to you and to one another. Fill us with a sense of purpose and energy to serve you. Fill us with a sense of purpose and energy to serve you in the name of Jesus, the one who teaches us when we pray to say together, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, no matter what we have done, no matter what we have left undone, by the power of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In love, we are welcomed. We are made whole. We are set free to go out and begin again. This is good news for us today and every day. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now this morning, we don't have a child among us, but we're all children at heart, right? Okay, good. Work with me on this. Okay. Oh, we do have a child among us. <laughs> Aren't you glad you arrived just at the right moment? Okay, but the grown-ups are also going to have to help us today figure some stuff out. Okay, so I have some things I'm going to show you, and you're going to have to figure this out. Here's a water bottle. We want to know what these things have in common. And uh, this is a shower spray. It's cleaner. It's organic. It's nice. Uh, some banana muffins. Mm -hmm. They're homemade. Uh, also, um, some knitting. Brought some knitting. Any knitters want to, you know, get to it during the service? You're welcome. Uh, and also, this says the best day ever. Yeah, I'm presuming it's a birthday thing. Okay, so we've got a water bottle, some cleaner, banana muffins, knitting, and a birthday hat. Any guesses? You're all looking squinty-eyed. Okay, so they actually do have something in common. They do. This is a water bottle. Do you know what I do with this water bottle? I don't. This isn't my water bottle. This is a trick. I give it to someone in my family, and I say, on a hot summer day, take this. Don't forget your water bottle because it will mean that you're hydrated and you feel okay. And uh, this is bathroom cleaner so that I can clean the bathroom. I do that at home for the people who live there. I made banana muffins and I say to my husband, eat breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. And I just took up knitting. See, I'm knitting a scarf. You see that? Uh, it's all I know how to knit, so that's what I'm knitting, because it's easy. Uh, and I'm knitting that for one of my kids. And I will say, wear this and keep yourself warm, right? Hopefully I'm done before the winter is over. And this, let's see, does it fit? There we go. How do I look? Do I look OK? OK, this is because I love to throw birthday parties. For some of my friends, I've thrown some good parties, and for my kids. And all of these things, you know what I'm saying when I'm saying all the different things? I'm saying, I love you. It's all these different ways that I say I love you. I say I love you by saying, drink your water. And I say I love you by, happy birthday. And wear your scarf and eat breakfast. Those are all ways that I say I love you to the people in my life. And I bet there are some people in your life who say stuff, right? Like, mm, don't stay out after dark. Or wear your helmet, right? There's all those things. Or eat your breakfast or take your water bottle, all those things. And they all are saying, I love you. And this is important. Do you know why this is important? Because God loves us. But how do we know? Because we don't hear a booming voice out of the sky that says, I love you. But God has sneaky ways of saying, I love you, much like these ways. So when it's beautiful outside, you know, I hear we're getting snow later. And snow is beautiful, but also fun for tobogganing. 
And that is God saying, I love you. I want you to see beautiful things, and I want you to have a good time. And we read Bible stories, and there's lots of Bible stories about how much Jesus has love for all kinds of people. And so we think, oh, Jesus is loving. God is loving also. God is saying, I love you through Jesus. And if you look around in your life at all the people who say, I love you in different ways, that is also God saying, I love you in all kinds of different ways. And I like that. So you can think about um, that next time your mom or your dad um, shakes their finger at you and says, wear your helmet. Because what they're really saying is, I love you so much, I want you to be safe and healthy. And that's a good thing. Even when it doesn't feel like it, it's still good. <laughs> so I thought we would pray again this week. If you will fold your hands, and, and everybody gets to do this, so, so it's not just Riley. And we can bow our head, and if you will say it after me. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Help me to say I love you in lots of different ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's sing together, Shine, Jesus, Shine. It's 376 if you want to follow along in the hymn book. As we come to God's word today, we pause in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to you this morning 
that you may speak to us words of love in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning, I know the McPherson clan is ready to share with us. Our first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 1 to 4. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the later time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, for the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is a responsive psalm, reading Psalm 27 together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. (laughs) For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Our third reading, our New Testament reading, comes from the first letter to the Corinthians, just at the beginning of the letter in chapter 1, reading verses 10 to 18. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that none of you can say you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. 
For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness for those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. <clears throat> and finally, the gospel. This morning, the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 to 23. Let us listen for God's word. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and they followed him. As he went from there, he saw two brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So my oldest son came to dinner, a uh, Sunday dinner, a couple of weeks ago. Happens every now and again. He's a busy guy. After supper, we were doing the dishes, and he looked at me, and he said, Mom... There's something I need to talk to you about. Now, if you're a parent, you know that's never good. I was immediately anxious, and he said, okay, so I have an opportunity. I've been offered a job. It's seasonal. It's just seasonal work, but it means that I'm going to be away for eight weeks in Yukon. I would temporarily leave my trucking job here, and I would go up there to drive fuel tankers on the ice roads. What do you think? So I knew immediately what this was about, because there's a TV show, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it meant that my precious baby would be driving a huge petroleum tanker over lakes that are only frozen for a few months of the year, and he would be living in minus 50 degree weather, mostly in the dark, mostly alone. It's a really risky job, and it's the kind of job where a mom could perhaps maybe worry incessantly about whether her child is in danger of plunging into icy, dark waters. He would be vulnerable, really, really vulnerable to all kinds of difficult things. So when we meet up with the disciples today in that reading in the gospel, Peter and James do not stop and ask their mom what she thinks of the new job. They don't ask their dad either. All of them just go right then. Follow me, Jesus says, I'll make you fishers of people. And they jump up and they go. No questions. All week, I have been thinking about this. I've been thinking about how did they decide? How did they go that fast? Now, my husband and my coworkers can tell you about how I don't make decisions quickly. 
I'm one of those slow people. I like to, um, you know, weigh the pros and cons, like maybe a list of the pros and a list of the cons. Um, I like to do some research. I'm big on research. You know, find out everything I can. Um, I ask for opinions. I'm a collaborative person, so I'll ask people what they think about something. But in this story, the disciples, they're just like in an instant. They turn on a dime, away they go and follow Jesus. I think it's very irresponsible. Well, some of you may know Dr. Brene Brown. Anybody heard of Brene Brown? Anybody? I, I thought maybe, Angela, I thought you might. Uh, so Dr. Brene Brown, um, she is a researcher. She's become more famous because she's now friends with Oprah. But she actually is a sociologist, and um, she did a TED Talk. This is years and years ago. It's maybe 10 or 12 years ago when she was knee-deep in her research. And it became, it went viral. It became very popular. And so we've heard of her now. But I went back and I watched it this week, and it was really helpful because it helped me understand the disciples a little better. Here's what Brene Brown says. She says, people who have courage... People who are willing to be uncomfortable, people who will take risks, like our disciples, they are what she calls wholehearted people. They have within themselves a strong sense of love and a strong sense of belonging. So she did a lot of clinical research, and in that research, she discovered that when people know they are loved and when they are a part of some kind of community or family or a tight-knit workplace, whatever that is, when they have those things, they are well-equipped to make courageous decisions. Courage is a heart word, she says. The root of the word courage is core, the Latin word for heart. In one of its earliest forms, the word courage meant to speak one's mind by telling one's heart. It, it doesn't actually mean what we mostly think of, which is like running into a burning building and saving a baby. That's not how it originally started out. It's, it's to be wholehearted, to speak from our heart, to act from our heart to let our guard down, to let ourselves be seen and our heart be known and be vulnerable to other people. Now that might mean investing in something that doesn't work out. Or it might mean sitting with our friend and being very uncomfortable because they just received terrible news. It might mean letting someone see us cry or maybe asking for a raise, or talking about intimate and important things like, like death, or love, or sex, or money. Those are all difficult things. But knowing we are loved, says Brene Brown, that allows us to be courageous, wholehearted, when we know that we are enough, when we know that we are loved just as we are, then we can be real with ourselves and with other people, and we can take risks, and we can be uncomfortable. The disciples are wholehearted in their decision to follow Jesus. They understood from him immediately that they were loved. They were received and accepted and welcomed. And so they could be vulnerable with Jesus, and they could take a huge risk, all because they were wholehearted. So I wonder, what about you? Would you say that you have a strong sense of love and belonging? Well, we were talking about this earlier before worship started. If we have the courage to be very vulnerable with ourselves and with each other, many of us would say it is a struggle. From an early age, we worry about what we look like, right? We worry about whether we're thin enough, are we attractive enough, are we tall enough, are we short enough? 
We fret over the shape of our nose, over the size of our calves. Do we have the right kind of hair? Do we have enough hair? Magazines, social media, TV, all of it. It thrives on our insecurities and it feeds them all the time. It tries to sell us products that are gonna make us feel better about ourselves. And then we think, if I just looked different, I would be lovable finally. Even if we're satisfied with our appearance, and some of us are, there are a million ways to imagine we are not lovable or we are not worthy of being loved. I know that you know the prick of shame from childhood failures and taunting when you were a little kid. All of us know that. All of us have lived through painful rejection, whether that was at work or whether that was in a relationship. We carry the weight of our own imperfections, whatever they are. Most of us can rattle off a million stories of how we haven't done enough, we haven't earned enough, or we haven't been enough. But what is wonderful about Jesus is he doesn't care. Jesus does not give a rip about any of that. You notice that he doesn't say, James, you need to put on a fresh shirt if you're coming with me. He doesn't say, well, you know, you're only the younger brother, John. He's not calling out to the beautiful, well-heeled people that probably lived somewhere besides out there on the fishing boats. He doesn't ask for a resume. He doesn't ask for credentials, nothing. He meets these new people, and he's immediately taken with them, and he says, come on, let's go. I like you. Let's go on an adventure. We may never stand on the beach with Jesus like that, but we can definitely learn something important from that story. If we're listening, we will hear that we also, like the disciples, are lovable. We are loved. We are welcomed just exactly the way that we are. We are made in God's image after all. We are known, we are loved, we are trusted, we are invited along. We belong already. So there's my son standing in the kitchen, mom trying super hard not to freak out on the outside. And he said, what do you think, mom? What do you think of this? What do you think of me going up to the Yukon to drive on those ice roads? And I said, you definitely need to go. It's a risk. I will absolutely worry every single day that he is gone. But if he has the courage to go and to take up this new adventure, if he is willing to be vulnerable and to take a big risk, I can also be courageous. I am really proud of watching him choose something new, secure in the knowledge that he is loved and that he belongs. I will lean into that same truth that he clearly knows. Now they say that getting old is not for the faint of heart. The older I get, the more I completely understand that is true. Most of us are not anymore going to strike out on a new career path the way the disciples did or the way my son Andrew did, but I think there are plenty of places where we are called upon to be courageous. We may need, in our chapter of life, to act with courage by accepting a hearing aid or using a cane. We could be called into courageousness by letting our friends or our family care for us when we're sick. And rather than preserving our heart, preserving our past or pretending that we're just fine, thank you, we could be our honest and vulnerable self, our loved self. Last week, your homework, do you remember your homework? If you were here last week, you had homework, was to do some holy hanging around. It was fun homework. It was easy homework. This week, your homework is a little harder, but I'm hoping just as life-giving and just as rewarding. I'm going to invite you into courageous living. Choose one thing, just one. 
doesn't have to be a whole host of things, and it does not need to be a new career. One thing. One thing to be wholehearted about. Do something that makes you feel awkward. Like saying out loud, I love you, to somebody that you normally don't say that to, but you absolutely feel. Or maybe it's asking for help, even though you don't want to ask for help at all. Or maybe it's accepting help when it's being offered. If you are not fine, this week if somebody says, how are you, don't say fine. Be honest and wholehearted instead. This week, let your guard down. Be soft, only once, you only have to do it once. Take a risk. Let yourself be vulnerable. Be wholehearted and courageous. Jesus is not going to call any of us to go out and be fishers of people. But Jesus does call us to be like the disciples, to be wholehearted and courageous. You can do this. You can do this. I know. And you can do way more because you are loved and you do belong. Jesus calls you into a meaningful life because you are made in God's image and accepted wholly and loved completely. This is the good news of the gospel. You are loved and you belong. Let this good news shape us today and in every day that follows. Thanks be to God. Amen. I have decided, so let us sing. Number 570, I have decided to follow Jesus. Let us gather up all of our prayers of gratitude and our prayers for one another. Let us pray. God of love, in these weeks after Christmas, we continue to celebrate that you are the light of the world. You light our way forward even when we cannot see what is ahead of us. When we're confused, you give us clarity. When we're lost, you find us and set us on our way. We are grateful for your guidance, and we know that no matter what comes, we are loved and we are surrounded by your light. Lord, we know that light shines far beyond us into the world. And it reveals those people and those places that are in need. 
Today, we remember those suffering in places of oppression or violence. We remember those caught up in war and conflict. We remember refugees in search of safety and home. Bring peace, O oh God, to countries, to leaders, to communities, to individual hearts. Lord, today we pray for those who have, been not, who have not been loved well. Those who don't know what it's like to be truly loved. Lord, surround them with loving people. Soften their sharp edges. Lessen their anger. Release them from the pain of their past. May all of Jesus' followers demonstrate your love. May all of us demonstrate your love so it becomes real for those who are seeking love. Lord, we pray for those who are weary and worn, for those who are ill, for those who are grieving, where we encounter those who struggle, O oh God, inspire us to reach out, to offer compassion and kindness. It is in love that you gather us together, O oh God, and we rejoice in all those who are here together this morning. We give thanks for the McPherson clan, for this neighborhood of Creef. We give you thanks for all of our extended family here at Knox. Bless us as a community, O oh God. Receive our thanks. Inspire us to love. Lead us into wholehearted living. For we come to you in humility and vulnerability, seeking Jesus, the one in whose name we pray. Amen. Knox News today. First, I'd like to say thank you to Reverend Christine for your message this morning. Uh, we appreciate your, your words. This afternoon, there is a celebration of life for Maureen Smith. It's at the Cutton Field in Guelph at 1.30, uh, the address 190 College Avenue East. On February the 1st, there is a joint meeting with Session and the Board of Managers. Um, on February 26th, we will have our congregational uh, annual meeting. In preparation for that, there's an annual report that's being prepared. If you have anything to be included in that, you can message Judy Fisher. And if you have any records that need to be uh, examined, you can send them to myself or leave them here at the church. Thank you. Stay all safe when 
This morning I know I can see the offering plates are at the back and they are ready to receive our offerings, whether that is before the service or afterwards. James Faust said, the thankful heart opens our eyes to a multitude of blessings that continually surround us. Let us pray and dedicate our offerings and ourselves. Let us pray. Generous God, there is so much we are thankful for and so many ways that we are blessed by your love. We dedicate our gifts now. We dedicate ourselves, mindful that together with you, all of our gifts will be used to proclaim your good news of love for each other and for our whole world. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And finally, let us sing together. 626, Lord of all power. Go now in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and keep each one of us now and forevermore. Amen.